Here are some of the best calculator hacks you can do right now that will make your exams easier to pass using the Casio ClassWiz FX83 GTX. As I find more tricks, I'm going to be releasing more videos on this channel, so stay tuned. The first trick is using the time button. This is the time button. This button allows you to represent time in hours, minutes and seconds. Also to use all the maths operations to manipulate time. To represent, for example, 4 hours, 35 minutes and 20 seconds, we start by typing 4, followed by this button, which makes a small square in the top right corner. Then type 35 followed by the time button again, and finally 20 followed by the time button. Pressing equals shows this time. The calculator follows the structure of hours, minutes and seconds, so if we wanted to represent 47 minutes, we would have to type 0 followed by the time button. As 47 minutes is less than an hour, followed by 47 and then pressing the time button again. There's no need to represent zero seconds as we only are looking at minutes. Pressing equals only shows the 47 minutes. Let's say you wanted to convert 156 minutes to hours and minutes. Like previous, type zero followed by the time button to represent zero hours, then type 156 followed by the time button again. Pressing equals after immediately converts 156 minutes to 2 hours and 36 minutes. Let's say we wanted to know what time it was 2 hours, 50 minutes and 36 seconds later from the time 1.26pm. We first press 1 followed by the time button and then 26 followed by the same time button. We press plus and repeat the same process for adding 2 hours, 50 minutes and 36 seconds. 2 time button 50 time button and 36 time button. Pressing equals gives us the answer 4 16 pm and 36 seconds. In case you didn't believe me, let's have a look at this clock. Two hours added takes us to 326. Adding 50 minutes takes us to 4 16. And then finally 36 seconds takes us to 36 seconds. What if we wanted to convert a decimal of hours to time? So let's convert 1.425 hours to hours and minutes and seconds. You simply type this number into your calculator and press the time button, followed by an equals and presto. You get the minutes and seconds the decimal represents. The reverse can also be done. For example, converting an hour, 40 minutes and 20 seconds to a decimal. Type the time into the calculator by pressing one, followed by a time button, 40, time button again, and finally 20, followed by the time button. Pressing equals gives us our time version. To now represent this as a decimal, press the time button once again and now we have the decimal version of this time which is 1.672 recurring hours. What if you wanted to know how many minutes this is? We simply multiply this decimal by 60 and press equals. After, press the time button and now we have our time in minutes. Alright, let me show you a couple of questions of how this button can be used in an exam setting. Davos is a cleaner. The table shows information about the time it will take him to clean each of four rooms in a house. The kitchen will take two hours, the sitting room takes an hour and 40 minutes, the bedroom takes an hour and a half, and the second bedroom will take 45 minutes. Davos wants to clean all four rooms in one day. He will have a break of a total time of 75 minutes. Davos is going to start cleaning at 9am. Will he finish cleaning by 4pm? You must show all your working. To answer the question, we have to add all the times together that it takes to clean all four rooms plus the time he will take for break. To do this using our calculator, we type 2 followed by our time button to represent 2 hours. Plus 1 followed by the time button and then 40 followed by the time button again. For adding 1 and a half hours, we can type 1.5 followed by the time button. To add on 45 minutes, we first press the addition button. Next, we type 0 followed by the time button because there are zero hours and 45 minutes. Then we type 45 followed by the time button again. And finally, we're gonna add on the 75 minutes that represents Davos's break. We first press the addition button followed by zero and then the time button. Then finally 75, then the time button again. We press equals and you'll get the fraction 43 out of six. Pressing the time button shows us that this is equal to seven hours and 10 minutes. Now we find the difference between 9am and 4pm and compare the times. The difference between 9am and 4pm is 7 hours. 7 hours compared to 7 hours and 10 minutes means Davos will not finish cleaning by 4pm. He'd run over by 10 minutes. A slightly different question. 
Lara is a skier. She completed the ski race in 1 minute and 54 seconds. The race was 475 meters in length. Lara assumes that her average speed is the same for each race. Using this assumption, work out how long Lara should take to complete a 700 meter race. Give your answer in minutes and seconds. Now, if we assume her average speed is the same, that means the distance is directly proportional to the time. We can use the unit ratio method to solve this question with the use of the time button. We lay out our question like so. 475 meters to one minute and 54 seconds. To get to 700 from 475, we divide by 475 to find the time it takes on average to run one meter and then multiply by 700. The same calculations are applied to the time, 1 minute and 54 seconds. Let's use our calculator and the time button to do this. We type 0, followed by the time button, as there are no hours, 1, followed by the time button again, and 54, followed by the time button again. We now divide the amount by 475 and press equals. 1 meter will take 0.24 seconds. We now multiply the value by 700 by pressing times and 700. The final answer on the calculator is 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Ok, moving on to our next calculator trick, we now have the standard form option. We can easily add and subtract, multiply, divide and convert standard form numbers using this option. We can change the settings on the calculator to give numbers as standard form. We do this by pressing shift and menu. Press a number that corresponds to number format. For me, it's 3. Then press the number that corresponds to psi, SCI. The number is 2 for me, and finally press 0. Now we're all set. Let's say we want to convert 45,600,000 to standard form. We type our number into our calculator and press equals. The calculator automatically gives our number in standard form. That's all we have to do. Let's try a smaller number. Typing this number and pressing equals gives our answer as a fraction. We then press the SD button to show it in standard form. Alright, let's have a look at an exam style question. We can easily convert complex calculations with the settings changed. For example, work out 3.2 times by 10 to the power of 3 plus 5.1 times by 10 to the power of negative 2 all over 4.3 times by 10 to the negative 4. Give your answer in standard form, correct to three significant figures. Let's type in this calculation into our calculator using the fraction button. Since our calculator is still programmed to give answers in standard form, we get our answer looking like this. The final answer, correct to three significant figures, is 7.44 times by 10 to the power of 6. Another interesting question. 2 times by 10 to the power of 12 red blood cells have a total mass of 90 grams. Work out the average mass of one blood cell. Give your answer in standard form. Alright, we know 2 times by 10 to the power of 12 red blood cells is equivalent to 90 grams, so let's put this as a ratio. Now to get to one red blood cell, we would have to divide 90 grams by 2 times by 10 to the power of 12 red blood cells. Let's type this into our calculator using the fraction button. Then we press equals. Since the setting is still in standard form, the answer is presented in standard form. This is our final answer. To return your calculator to the normal setting, press shift, menu, then press the number for number format, press the number for norm, and finally press 1. You'll be returned to the main screen all cleared and everything is back to normal. Ok cool, now we're moving on to the fact button. This button represents a number as the product of its prime factors. For example, represent 84 as a product of its prime factors. Type 84 into the calculator and press equals. After, press shift and the time button to access the fact function and our number is now represented as a product of its primes. This button is great for representing a number as a product of its prime, but also for letting you know if a number is a prime number or not. For example, Let's do the same thing but with 103. We type in 103, we press equals, then we press shift, then the fact button, then nothing changes. Because nothing changes, this means 103 is a prime number, it has no other factors except 1 and itself. And that's it, that's what we can use it for. Let's move on to an example. So here's a list of numbers, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and finally 29. From the numbers in the list, write down a square number. Then from the numbers in the list, write down a number that is a multiple of 4 and 6. And finally, write down all the prime numbers in this list. 
let's use the fact button on all the above numbers. A nice trick to know if a number is a square number is if all the powers of the prime numbers of a number are even. The only number with only even powers is 25. Therefore, 25 is the only square number. The second part is straightforward. It's asking which numbers are in both the four and six times tables. 24 is the only number from that list. And finally, we know a prime number only has two factors, one and itself. And out of these numbers, there are only two that match that description. All right, do you want to learn the entire Pythagoras topic in under 10 minutes? Take a look at this video I created a while back ago. Now, when I say a while back ago, I mean a while back ago. I'm Mr. Ken. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Keep pushing onwards and upwards. Peace.